on World News Tonight. Monkeypox spreads. Along with Spain and Brazil, India reports its first death from the deadly monkeypox virus. Trip confirmed. Amid speculation of a visit to Taipei and an angry response, Nancy Pelosi confirmed to visit four Asian countries. Health complications. Pope Francis says that with frailty and age, he is in a new phase of papacy and would be ready to resign. And illuminating skies. China celebrates the anniversary of the People's Liberation Army in style with a drone show. This is Other Than Anna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. Now, as monkeypox cases continue to spread across the world, India has now reported its first death linked to the viral zootonic infection. Spain has also reported a second death from the monkeypox in as many days. These are believed to be the first confirmed monkeypox fatalities in Europe since its recent spread beyond Africa. To get further details from India, we have other than a world news special correspondent, Gayatri Gunasekara, who joins us now from Delhi in India. For more, Gayatri, over to you. Yes, Shenali, a 22-year-old youth with monkeypox symptoms passed away in Kerala's Tessar district after travelling from a Middle Eastern country. The state administration has announced its intention to undertake a high-level inquiry to look into the case. Following his death, the state health department had called a meeting in Purnayar and a contact list and a route map of the deceased youth were prepared. The health department has tra uh, traced and contacted people he had been in touch with after his arrival in India to isolate and monitor them. The, government, uh, the state government said that while the results of the test done in UAE confirmed the presence of the monkeypox virus, a probe would be conducted to ascertain the cause of the death. India has, uh, to f uh, India has so far had four confirmed monkeypox uh, cases, three of them in Kerala. The patient who had the first reported case was discharged from the hospital. The monkeypox outbreak has seen in uh, more than 22,000 cases in nearly 80 countries since May. There have been 75 suspected deaths in Africa, mostly in Nigeria and Congo. Back to you, Shenali. Thank you. And that was Adhidhar Nawalny, Special Correspondent Guy Trigunasekara reporting from Delhi in India. U.S. House Representative Speaker Nancy Pelosi began a trip to Asia with her office naming four destinations. And amid speculation of a visit to Taipei and an angry response from China, there was no mention of the stop-off in Taiwan. Speaker Nancy Pelosi overseas this weekend, confirming a trip to four Asian countries but making no mention of a potential visit to Taiwan. Chinese President Xi Jinping warned President Biden in a call last week about the U.S. meddling in the contested territory, with Chinese officials reportedly communicating, those who play with fire will perish by it. A source close to the speaker who reviewed her itinerary tells the stop is still considered tentative. I don't ever talk about my travel because, as some of you know, it's a security issue. If Pelosi visits, she'd be the highest-ranking American official to touch down in Taiwan since then-Speaker Newt Gingrich in 1997. The possibility already escalating tensions with China, which claims the self-ruled island as its own. Beijing flexing its military might with drills in the South China Sea over the weekend. The USS Ronald Reagan ready to respond. The speaker is leading a congressional delegation in Asia to address other thorny issues, including trade, the COVID pandemic and climate change. The U.S. has remained steadfast in its commitment to Taiwan, and the Biden administration has been clear that U.S. policy has not changed. The United States strongly opposes any unilateral efforts to change the status quo or to uh, undermine peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. From water to fire, two very different natural disasters are affecting the United States with the fire burning in California near the Oregon border has forced firefighters to fall back into defensive positions to protect homes and property while forecasters fear another massive heat wave may be forming then in the east. Heavy rains are drenching Kentucky as well with death toll now reaching to at least 28. 
Along forest roads in Northern California, hillsides of roaring flames turn day into night. The McKinney Fire now raging during a heat wave stretching across the Pacific Northwest. The blaze exploding in size over the weekend from one mile to 62 square miles in just over 24 hours. Thunder cells rolled in and the fire kind of got pushed down the canyon and it got wind driven and that's kind of where we're at now. Homes and vehicles lost, thousands evacuated. Just north, over 60 hikers on the popular Pacific Crest Trail extracted from the backcountry. While across the west, more fires flaring up, with erratic weather threatening to bring dry thunderstorms with dangerous lightning, but little to no actual rain. But at the devastating Oak Fire that burned over 100 homes, crews have finally gotten the upper hand. Meanwhile, heat alerts have been issued across Washington State and Oregon, where authorities are investigating at least seven deaths that may have been heat-related. U.S. President Joe Biden has retested positive for COVID-19 just days after the White House said that he had been given the all clear to leave isolation in a rare case of a rebound following treatment with an antiviral drug. U.S. President Joe Biden tested positive for COVID-19 again in what the White House doctor described as a rebound case seen in a small percentage of patients who take the antiviral drug Paxlovid. The 79-year-old president, who emerged from isolation on Wednesday after testing positive earlier this month, issued a video statement on Saturday. Hey folks, Joe Biden here. Tested positive this morning. Could be working from home for the next couple of days. Uh, and they're feeling fine. Everything's good. Biden will return to strict isolation, according to the White House, and will cancel planned trips to his home in Wilmington and work trip in Michigan. Studies have shown that a small percentage of people taking Paxlovid, used to treat high-risk patients, will suffer a relapse or rebound days after the five-day treatment course has ended. The White House doctor said there is no plan to reinitiate treatment, given Biden's lack of symptoms. Russian President Vladimir Putin says Russian Navy will soon be equipped with hypersonic cruise missiles. He added that the specifics of the development will be dependent on Moscow's interest, with some speculating that it signals more attacks against Ukraine are in the pipeline. The Russian Navy is set to receive hypersonic Zircon cruise missiles within the next few months. This, according to Russian President Vladimir Putin, speaking on Russia's Navy Day on Sunday. We will provide protection firmly and by all means. The key thing here is the capability of the Navy forces, not to mention the latest Zircon hypersonic missile systems, which have no countertypes in the world and no barriers. Dear comrades, their delivery to the Russian armed forces will begin in the coming months. Russia first tested the Zircon hypersonic cruise missiles in January 2020 and claimed they reached speeds of over 10,000 kilometers per hour, or nine times the speed of sound, and are able to strike targets within a range of 1,000 kilometers. Touting their firepower, Putin says the missiles will be used against any country that decides to infringe on Russian sovereignty and freedom. That message also came as Putin signed a new 55-page naval doctrine, which sets out the broad strategic aims of Russia's navy. According to the doctrine, Russia's main threats include the strategic policy of the U.S. to dominate the world's oceans and the movement of NATO closer to Russia's borders. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now, Pope Francis admitted he needs to slow down, telling reporters after a six-day trip to Canada that he cannot maintain his pace of international travel and may have to think about retiring. A visibly weary Pope has admitted he may have to slow down. Speaking to journalists on the way back from a high-profile trip to Canada, the 85-year-old pontiff has said he won't rule retirement out. If ill health means he's unable to continue his busy schedule of international travel. I don't think I can continue doing trips with the same rhythm as before. I think that at my age and with this limitation, I have to save myself a bit in order to be able to serve the church or decide to step aside. This, with all honesty, is not a catastrophe. A pope can be changed. There is no problem with that. During much of the pontiff's visit, he relied on a wheelchair due to knee pain. 
Pope Francis is suffering from torn knee ligaments and sciatica and has been slowed by major intestinal surgery last year when part of his colon was removed. The trip to Canada was Pope Francis's 37th international voyage since becoming Pope in 2013. Describing it as a pilgrimage of penance, the pontiff used his trip to apologize for the harm caused to indigenous communities by church-run schools, which became hubs for abuse. Taking away children, changing culture, changing minds, changing traditions, changing a race, so to speak, a whole culture. Yes, it's a technical word, genocide. I didn't use it because it didn't come to my mind, but I described it. It's true, yes. Yes, it is genocide. The pontiff says he plans to fulfill his commitments to visit countries including South Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo, but will delay planning new visits until he's had the chance to assess his health. A session of Beirut's massive port grain silos shredded in the 2020 explosion collapsed in a huge cloud of dust on Sunday after a weeks-long fire triggered by a grains that had fermented and ignited in summer heat. A cloud of dust covering the port of Beirut as these grain silos collapsed on Sunday. Damaged in the explosions of the 4th of August 2020, the silos finally gave way. More than 200 people were killed in those explosions. And just a few days before the two-year anniversary, this latest incident brought back the trauma of that tragic day for many. I was running some errands from the house, and we saw the silos collapsing on the way. It was the same feeling as when the blast happened. We remembered the explosion. A few big pieces fell, and my son got scared when he saw it. Already weakened, a fire broke out in the most damaged part of the silo just over two weeks ago. According to the Lebanese authorities, the fire was caused by high temperatures and the fermentation of grain. Some silos contain more than 3,000 tonnes of wheat and other grains, something that is a constant worry for the residents of Beirut. We are not worried for ourselves, but for our children. From the rising pollution and odours, we don't even have electricity now. Instead of providing electricity for the neighbourhood so we can close the windows on our children and turn on a fan, there is no electricity. Lebanon is currently experiencing an unprecedented economic crisis, with 80% of the population now living below the UN poverty line. Thousands of supporters of Shiite populist cleric Maqtada al-Sadr stormed Baghdad's fortified government zone and broke into parliament for the second time in a week, leaving at least 125 people injured and escalating a political standoff. It's another chaotic scene in Iraq's parliament. For the second time this week, supporters of Muqtada al-Sadr have forced their way into the building. It's a tactic they've used before. In 2016, followers of the influential cleric overtook the legislature to protest political deadlock. They now find themselves in the same situation. We are in the parliament for a third time to root out the corruption, political parties and militias. We're here to fix Iraq and get it back to its position by the word of people and with God's blessings and our leader, Muqtada al-Sadr. Protesters are angry at the nomination of Mohammed al-Sudani, a pro-Iran pick for prime minister. Demonstrators beat images of the country's former leader, Nouri al-Maliki, who they blame for backing al-Sudani. A vote had been scheduled to confirm al-Sudani in the post this Saturday, but it was suspended due to the unrest. The protesters say they plan to ensure the ballot doesn't happen in secret, behind closed doors. This is a message to the parliament from the Iraqi people. The authority of this parliament is over. Power is for the people who will decide the future. The nationalist anti-Iran cleric Muqtada al-Sadr had seemed poised to take power after his party landed the largest bloc in October's election. But after he was unable to form a government, he withdrew his lawmakers from parliament. By mobilizing his supporters now, al Sadr is showing he's still able to assert control over the political process. 
nearly 10 months on from the election. Iraq is still without a government, and it seems the impasse is unlikely to end soon. To show support for EU membership, Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez visits Western Balkan states and tells North Macedonia that it did the right thing by unblocking roads that will lead to the European Union. Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez was in Skopje on Sunday as part of his tour of five Western Balkan countries, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, North Macedonia, Montenegro and Albania. He's encouraging the nations to continue with their push to become EU member states. And he congratulated North Macedonia's Prime Minister Dimitar Kovacevsky for negotiations on this process having recently been unlocked after EU member Bulgaria lifted its veto. You have done the right thing. You have unblocked the road that will undoubtedly lead North Macedonia to where it belongs, which is the European Union. North Macedonia is European both geographically and historically, and now you are one step closer to your longed-for goal. Earlier on Sunday in Montenegro, Sanchez also assured President Milo Djukanovic that the country has everything to become a great example for EU integration in the Western Balkans. And on his visit to Bosnia, Sarajevo's EU aspirations were also backed by the Spanish PM. He called on its leaders to reduce internal tensions, engage in dialogue and move forward together on the reforms needed to become a member. The Balkan nations are all in different stages of the EU ascension process. EU officials have recently sought to encourage governments there to move on with reforms amid concerns over Russia's efforts to boost its influence in the region. Sanchez will conclude his tour of the Western Balkans in Albania today. Kosovo was excluded from his trip as Spain does not recognize its independence from Serbia. Welcome back to World News Tonight and for more news let's take you around the world in a minute. England won a major women's tournament for the first time in Chloe Kelly's extra time goal secured a 2-1 victory over Germany at a sold out Wembley. Bill Russell who won 11 National Basketball Association championships during his Hall of Fame career spent with the Boston Celtics died on Sunday. The founder and owner of one of the Ukraine's largest agricultural companies, Nebulon, has been killed in the Russian attack in the southern part of the country. Debris from China's Long March 5B rocket has re-entered the Earth's atmosphere six days after the first beam launched into space. The remains of the 30-meter-long core stage of China's most powerful rocket fell back to the Earth over the Indian and Pacific Oceans. New York City has declared a local outbreak of monkeypox a public health emergency. A statement from the mayor Eric Adams saying that the city is at an epicenter of the outbreak. South Korea saw a decline in the number of COVID-19 cases down to about 73,000 from 82,000 a day before. Though cases are declining, the number of patients in critical conditions has doubled. And that is all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you missed watch any of the stories we air tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And finally, let's take a look at China celebrating the 95th anniversary of the People's Liberation Army with a drone show. Stay safe and have a good night.